LEADME, leading platform from European citizens, industries, academia and policymakers in media accessibility, CA19142. COST, European Cooperation in Science and Technology. I'm very pleased to welcome our first speaker, who is one of the founding members of Colnet. She is Jennifer Lertola. She holds a PhD from the National University of Ireland in Galway. She is an English junior assistant professor at Università degli Studi dei Piemonte Orientale in Italy. And her main research interests include audiovisual translation, foreign language teaching, e-learning and distance learning. She's the author of the book Audiovisual Translation in the Foreign Language Classroom, Applications in the Teaching of English and Other, Form and Other Foreign Languages, published by Research Publishing in, in 2019, and of various papers on audiovisual translation in language learning. She's a member of the editorial board of the journal Translation and Translanguaging in Multilingual Context, published by John Benjamin, and co-editor alongside um, Lauren Calcaterra and Noa Talaban of the Benjamin's current topics, um, audiovisual translation in applied linguistic educational perspectives. Um, she has participated in several international projects, including Clip Flare, uh, funded by the European Lifelong Learning Program, and she's part of ARENA, Accessibility, Audiovisual Translation and Language Learning Teaching Innovation Group and a member of TRADIT, Didactic Audiovisual Translation Research Group at the Universidad Nacional de Educación a Distancia. The TRADIT Research Group is currently carrying out the research project TRADILEX, about which she will be speaking today. And this is a um, uh, research and innovation project funded by the Spanish Ministry of Science and Innovation. So after the seminar, after her after her speech. There will be time for comments and questions. And please raise your hand on Google Meet if you want to participate or write your questions on the chat. I will be moderating that part of the session. So thank you, Jennifer. Feel free to start when you're ready. Thank you very much, Blanca. Just one second, I'm going to share my screen. Let's see if everything is working now. Um, okay, so I will be watching at the screen and um, uh, let's see, I'm afraid I won't see your comments, but um, as Blanca said, um, um, we have time for questions afterwards. So first of all, I would like to thank you, well, all of you for being here and uh, for your interest in this uh, presentation. And I would like to thank um, Colnet and of course uh, Blanca for um, organizing all I mean this wonderful uh, uh, event and um, also the Universidad uh, Pompeo Fabra. Thank you very much for hosting the event. Um, I can see <laughs> Uh, many colleagues and friends, so I'm very glad you're here and uh, I'm pleased to present this um, exciting project. So I'd say we can start. Um, so um, basically the presentation will focus on the project, uh, but first of all I would like to give you a few information about audiovisual translation as a didactic resource in foreign language learning. And uh, I will actually focus on um, didactic subtitling and dubbing, which are the most uh, used uh, AVT modes um, in the language classroom. Um, we will have a look at um, briefly at the state of the art and also on a recent um, survey on teachers' view on a didactic uh, ABT. Uh, we will talk about uh, the context in which um, um, Tradilex was uh, developed, and uh, in particular uh, EU-funded projects uh, like Leafair. Um, I will talk about um, the more um, local context in which Tradilex was designed, which is at the ONED, and so the teaching innovation uh, projects at the ONED in Spain. And then we will focus on the project itself, uh, about the objectives. I will uh, show you the website so you can meet the team and see um, the main feature of the website, um, the resources already available and future resources um, that are in progress. Um, just briefly mention the dissemination action. And uh, then uh, I will provide you with a description of the off 
uh, a didactic sequence and a sample of, uh, of one didactic sequence we have prepared. And then at the very end, uh, I'll show you the references. And of course, uh, this uh, presentation is recorded. And if you need uh, the PowerPoint, um, I can provide that to you. Um, I'm very glad as well that uh, Noa Talavan is here, who is the coordinator of the project, and he's doing a great job in coordinating uh, all of us. Um, so let's move on. So, um, as I said, we're talking about um, audiovisual translation as a didactic resource. Um, well, um, there's actually a great deal of research on the use of, um, let's say, passive audiovisual translation in uh, foreign language learning, and especially the use of uh, subtitle audiovisual uh, material has been proved by several studies, and here you have um, just a few. Um, over the last 20 years, there was a shift and foreign language education has moved towards the active engagement of learners through audiovisual translation tasks. And um, well, this uh, potential has actually been recognized by European institutions as well as scholars um, who have focused on um, different aspects of uh, audiovisual translation and in particular um, both captioning, uh, which are written, uh, what we define as a written language transfer, uh, transfer procedure, as well as revoicing, so oral language transfer procedure. But let's have a look and see how we can use um, uh, ABT in foreign language learning. Um, of course, we can uh, have interlingual, so we when we actually have um, a transfer from one language to another. So that means uh, there's a translation uh, with, uh, as a normal ABT wave standard, <clears throat> so from L2 to L1, so from the second language to the first language. And then we, um, well, we usually use a reverse, so um, learners can benefit from a transfer from the first language to the second language. Um, <clears throat> of course, we can have intralingual, so we move from uh, the same language, but we can also have intersemiotic. So we actually move from nonverbal input to the second language. And uh, for what concern the, well, the two um, uh, main um, descriptions of caption and voicing, um, I'm going to um, show you which are the most um, ABT uh, modes used in uh, foreign language learning. Uh, we usually talk about subtitling and uh, that is that has been used um, widely uh, in terms of uh, interlingual and intralingual. But also more recently, uh, there was a, a proposal uh, by Talavan uh, about using subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. And this, is, uh, this proves particularly useful uh, because they, uh, learners they have to provide uh, paralinguistic information, so sounds, uh, tones of voice, music, etc. And um, these also foster learners um, audiovisual accessibility uh, awareness. And then, uh, still, uh, Talavan has uh, recently uh, talked about um, creative uh, subtitling. And uh, while well, we know creative subtitling as um, uh, fan subs or fake subs, and that has been discussed also by the Athintas. Um, and in language learning, um, usually um, students are asked to freely create subtitles for the um, audiovisual input, and this helps, um, apart from um, uh, learn, well, uh, language skills, also to develop creativity hmm? and to be able to interact the video in a more cre one, uh, in creative way. Um, for what concerns uh, revoicing, uh, we also have um, different ABT modes. Uh, well, indeed, the most um, um, used and study was dubbing. Um, once again, here, like in the case of subtitling, um, intralingual, um, interlingual uh, dubbing, but also more recently, um, Talavan has uh, proposed creative dubbing. And uh, that's the same, uh, well, similar to um, creative uh, subtitles, uh, students can be more creative, they can create a new script, and uh, usually it has been used as a, a humorous, uh, I mean, with a humorous uh, purpose, and uh, students uh, seem to enjoy it very much. Um, and then one... Um, Actually, one positive aspect of creative dubbing, um, Talavan suggested that it can actually be used with even um, lower level students because they, they can really uh, free create uh, a new script and use the uh, language as much as possible. So and that is really um, uh, one uh, positive point of creative dubbing. And then we have audio description, which has also been used um, 
well, quite a lot actually recently um, in different contexts, and uh, voiceover, uh, which is more limited, and then free commentary, uh, once again, quite limited use, but still is there, and um, I'll show you then in the state of the art some proposals. Uh, then I would like to show you here just examples of uh, application of uh, didactic subtitling. Um, this is a, a 2020 uh, proposal by uh, Talavan. You can see the combination, so what we were talking um, till now, interlingual, interlingual, um, subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, also keyword captions and creative. Uh, and then you have the direction of languages and uh, the suggestion on um, well, for which level of um, proficiency, uh, they can be um, effectively used. Same here for uh, dubbing. Uh, you can have uh, intra interlingual reverse, intralingual, so same language, or creative dubbing. And once again, here are the suggestions to use uh, with different uh, levels of proficiency. Um, um, I just would like to just uh, briefly um, focus on uh, basic norms for didactic AVT. Uh, that's something we were talking actually in the previous meeting with the um, CoLNET um, members. Um, well, uh, this is an application of audiovisual translation. So we're actually not training professional to be um, audiovisual translation um, experts, but uh, they need to uh, profit from AVT in uh, um, terms of language learning. So we actually uh, take the professional norms of subtitle, dubbing and other AVT modes, and we use them uh, for um, um, language learning. So these are uh, basic um, AVT um, guidelines. So in the case of subtitling, if, there's this, uh, if the translation is needed, uh, the quality should be high. That's what we usually um, uh, give to learners before they start the subtitling practice. Well, we um, insist that the register, register should be appropriate. Uh, the dialogue, of course, should be condensed, and this can be done by avoid obvious uh, repetitions. Um, then again, uh, each subtitle should be meaningful and self-contained. Uh, that's probably, um, I mean, something that they learn over time because it's not as, uh, of course, they're used to watch subtitles, but um, uh, actually create their own is not as easy as it might seem. Uh, and then again, that subtitle should be uh, on a maximum of two lines, and especially it's relevant, they should be in blocks of meaning and or grammatical uh, units. Um, of course, there's the time and space uh, constraints. <clears throat> Sorry. So they should stay from a minimum of one second to a maxim maximum of seven. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we insist on the fact that uh, as far as possible, they're not professional, but um, subtitles should be synchronized. Uh, and then, of course, <laughs> uh, in terms of language, uh, we uh, usually um, point out that grammatically, uh, well, they should be grammatically correct and uh, they should make use of punctuation, which is uh, something that they tend to uh, forget uh, when uh, subtitling, probably because they're uh, busy focusing on uh, different aspects. Uh, for what concerns dubbing, uh, well, um, usually, uh, well, we recommend them to rehearse dialogue beforehand. Um, and then they should pay particular attention to uh, the following aspects. Uh, well, the speed of speech, first of all, uh, the synchronization between the movement of the lips and the dialogue, which is one of the most uh, challenging um, aspects of dubbing for them, but also one of the uh, things they enjoy the most. Uh, of course, on pronunciation, so the um, um, repetition of uh, listening, the um, original uh, audiovisual input and then rehearsing the dialogue that's really helpful in that sense. Uh, then of course they can focus on intonation and uh, also on characterization on dram dramatization. So they need to um, imitate the actor's uh, performance. Then uh, we suggest them that if necessary to repeat the uh, same phrase uh, several times um, and that usually um, proves very helpful. And then, um, of course, uh, as in subtitling, uh, they need to respect as much as possible um, the time constraints. <clears throat> and that is also one challenging aspect of uh, dubbing. Um, then uh, Talavan, um, 2020, uh, she suggested, um, well, she provided a sample assessment rubric for didactic subtitling. Uh, as you can see here, the um, criteria and then the 
uh, how a teacher can rate uh, the student's performance. Same for didactic dubbing, uh, there are the um, aspects we just mentioned in the AVT basic uh, norms. And um, I just would like to give you an idea of what has been done <clears throat> in terms of research on captioning. Um, well, in a recent uh, state of the art, in, um, published in 2019, uh, we can see um, many publications and I just um, made a sort of a synthesis for you here. So just the aspect that um, have been studied the most. So listening comprehension for what, well, we're talking about standard and reverse interlingual subtitling. So scholars are focused on listening comprehension, writing skills, vocabulary, acquisition, also integrated language skills. Um, there was uh, one strand of uh, research on intercultural education and also on pragmatic awareness. And um, of course, these, uh, that I, well, these studies that I mentioned are all experimental studies, so that actually collected um, uh, data for analysis in terms of qualitative and quantitative um, analysis. Um, for what concerns intralingual subtitling, um, uh, scholars have focused mainly on writing skills. And then uh, more recently, as I mentioned before, uh, SDH subtitles have, have been used uh, in language learning uh, for integrated skills. Um, in this case, the focus was on written production and uh, listening comprehension. Um, and then uh, we have to say that uh, subtitling has also been used uh, in CLIL, so content and language integrated learning, and in bilingual uh, education context. Uh, for what concern captioning, um, sorry, for what concern, oh, it's not moving, yeah, revoicing, uh, still from the state of the art, uh, we can have an idea of what has been done on intralingual doubling. Well, of course, I added um, some more references that are more recent. Um, so uh, basically, uh, scholars I focus on speaking skills. And um, for what concern interlingual dubbing, it's more limited, uh, but the focus was on speaking as well as writing because they, um, they had to prepare the script um, and uh, the translation. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned before, the description um, has raised the attention of scholars, uh, especially over the last 10 years. And there's a great deal of, uh, of research, especially on vocabulary acquisition, uh, oral writing and integrated language skills. These are the experimental studies, but they're also um, um, more descriptive uh, studies on the, on the use of audio uh, description. Uh, and then, uh, well, as I said before, voiceover is more limited. Uh, there's actually uh, one recent study on um, speaking skills and uh, a forthcoming uh, publication on uh, the use of free commentary um, in uh, vo vocational education and training uh, with regard to the development of uh, speaking skills. So, um, just to provide you with a synthesis of the state of the art, we can say that um, English is one of the um, two languages involved in most of the studies and usually is actually the target language uh, learned. Um, we can say that usually experimental studies uh, are being carried out in face-to-face -face context uh, in higher education and usually, uh, well of course they're not big studies, but uh, they um, involved at least uh, a minimum of uh, 10 participants, and the language level usually range from uh, A1 uh, to C1, um, being a B1 and B2 the kind of most common. Um, we can also uh, see from the state of the art that usually the audiovisual input employed in uh, experimental studies is either a movie or a sitcom expert, uh, which usually proved to be the most entertaining and motivating for students. Um, for what concerns of titling software, um, well, of course, um, we are talking about uh, well, studies uh, carried out over the last 20 years. So um, the software was uh, learning by subtitling, Cliff Rare, Subtitle Workshop, and um, AGSAB. For what concerns revoicing, uh, Cliff Rare, uh, which has proved to be a great um, well, revoicing software. And uh, um, that, well, another one that was um, 
uh, commonly used was um, well Windows Movie Maker and also uh, for audio description the Viz uh, mobile app. Um, as I said at the beginning, um, I'm going to uh, talk about um, a survey that was uh, carried out through an online questionnaire by Alonso Perez and Sancha Requena in 2018. And I think it's very interesting because it gives us an idea of what, um, what has been done and uh, what teachers expect um, to be able to integrate audiovisual uh, translation in, uh, in the language classroom. Um, so, in this case, the questionnaire involved 56 teachers from 15 countries, mainly in higher education, as we said, that's, uh, well, that resembles the, the situation of experimental studies anyway. Um, the teachers uh, usually, well, the, the, the um, subject taught was either English or Spanish, was in face-to-face -face context and to intermediate level students. Um, Basically, teachers said that they used uh, all the ABT modes, um, as it would be expected, subtitling and dubbing were the most used, 79, 79 and 41% respectively, uh, but also, as we can see, uh, AD, SDH and voiceover, <clears throat> as well as free commentary, and uh, the combination were bo uh, both interlingual and intralingual. So, which were the positive aspects uh, according to the teachers? Uh, well, the ABD task, according to them, um, they were useful to develop a number of learning aspects. Uh, so, what we mentioned before, uh, which were the target, um, well, the focus of the experimental studies, so listening comprehension, vocabulary acquisition, intercultural awareness, motivation, uh, as well as oral and written uh, production. Uh, but teachers, and I think that's uh, very uh, interesting, they mention ne negative aspects, which also are highlighted in the literature. Uh, well, of course, uh, um, preparing AVT task is time consuming, very time consuming. Um, there's a heavy reliance on ICT for both the teacher and, and the learners. Um, and then um, well, teachers basically complained uh, the absence of evaluation guidelines. Uh, we can see that the study was carried, well, the study was published in 2018. And what I showed you before was the, uh, well, um, the evaluation guidelines provided in 2020 by Talaman. So there's, uh, there's been a lot of work in the meantime, but uh, we need to take that into account. Um, and then what about future, uh, future perspectives? What do they think? Uh, well, teachers are positive and oh, well, we can see that um, as much as 55% uh, of them believe that uh, ABT task could be a flawless, flawless integrated in the foreign language curriculum. And they actually mentioned that could be done both face-to-face -face and online. Um, and then uh, what teacher um, <laughs> call for is actually proper training on ABT in foreign language learning. And they wish to have a common ground on the selection and assessment of ABT material. So uh, in the past, we have to say that there were two great uh, EU funded projects. The very first one that was uh, indeed groundbreaking was um, learning via subtitling, uh, which was funded by the um, European Commission uh, from 2006 and 2008. And um, so the participation of five European universities. So from that project, uh, there was a um, follow-up, which was Clipfair, um, a recent um, uh, lifelong learning uh, program uh, project, was uh, developed between 2011 uh, till 2014. And in that case, there were as many as uh, 10 European uh, universities. And uh, the main outcome of um, the project was this um, uh, platform, which was, um, well, which is still um, running. Um, and uh, this platform um, is basically, as you can see, um, including uh, the um, video. You have the um, captioning and revoicing components. So basically, um, students could create the subtitles um, here and uh, also do the voiceover of the uh, synchronized um, um, audio, well, um, language input. And then there were other components that would be useful in, the, um, um, in carrying out the activity. Um, 
well, of course, uh, one of the main objectives of Cliffler was the integration of uh, captioning and revoicing. Uh, so uh, there were um, 15 uh, languages involved in the project, and um, Cliffler, as I mentioned before, was successfully test, uh, tested in several experimental studies, and uh, both in face-to-face, uh, -face, online, and blended uh, learning context. Um, unfortunately, recently, uh, Mac users have found um, uh, problems uh, opening the studio and um, also for uh, Windows with the uh, shift to Windows 10, uh, the um, installation of um, Microsoft Silverlight, which is one of the main components of um, <clears throat> the Clipfire Studio, uh, has given some problem. But there's actually a sort of um, a other way around to be able to open it <clears throat> anyway. That was a great project and I'm very glad I was part of it. Um, now, um, this is actually uh, what has been done. Uh, as you can see, um, well, the project I'm going to talk about today, Tradilex, and um, I'll talk about it uh, in a second, uh, was actually um, developed at Dionet. And this is, um, as you can see, the activity at Dionet from 2009 uh, about the, devel develop well, the development of um, educational innovation projects related to audiovisual translation. Uh, most of them actually um, were published uh, by members of the of the teaching innovation group uh, that is called Arena, and these are the most recent um, teaching innovation uh, project. We're actually uh, busy with the preparation of uh, which is about to start of the vocal project, which is voiceover and uh, language learning. And uh, many members of the Arena um, uh, group are actually in the Tradilex project. And um, as you can see, and as uh, Blanca presented at the very beginning, uh, this is an I must the uh, what well, the must the project funded by the uh, Spanish Ministry of uh, Science and Innovation. Uh, the duration is of the project is from 2020 to 2023. Uh, at the moment, we are actually 20 uh, members involved in the project. And there are people from uh, Spanish uh, as well as international uh, universities. So, which are the project objectives? Well, the main objective is to determine the improvement in the second language um, promoted by didactic ABT. Um, well, mainly uh, would be English as a foreign language, but there will be also other languages involved. <clears throat> and uh, to this purpose, a methodological proposal. Um, uh, for a didactic AVT sequence has been prepared and this includes a complete lesson plan which makes use of different uh, AVT uh, modes. So this uh, methodology will actually be piloted uh, with uh, B1 as well as B2 level uh, learners and the piloting and well the experimental phase will take place in the university language centers um, mainly in the institution involved in the project in Spain over the, um, well, over a duration of uh, five months. Um, so what what is included in this um, uh, ABT sequence? <coughs> Sorry, there will be three lesson plans for each of these five ABT modes. So as you can see, we will have subtitling, voiceover, dubbing, audio description, as well as uh, subtitles for the heart for the deaf and hard of hearing. So um, the project has a, a website uh, and you can actually um, uh, meet the members of the group as well as um, get news and uh, about um, events and dissemination of the project on the website. And I just would like to mention you to mention you, uh, which are the uh, resources already available. Uh, well, the um, uh, team has actually worked on um, actively on preparing um, uh, well more than four, 400 uh, references on the didactic, didactic AVT, and uh, they were published on, uh, on Mendeley uh, in a public group. But since Mendeley, since December, has changed the policy of um, public groups, now is a private group, but the references will be soon available uh, on the project website. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it was organized also a course on educational research, and I highly recommend you to visit the um, project website and uh, check the um, course because it's actually available while well, it's in Spanish. Um, 
and it has been very useful and I'm sure it will be very useful for you too. And uh, for um, resources in progress, um, it is planned to, um, well, we plan to publish a manual of good practices on the use of uh, didactic ABT uh, that will be useful both for teachers, as we have seen, uh, they need um, a common ground. Uh, so we hope to provide that to them and also for researchers. Uh, then uh, one main objective of the, of the project is actually to um, have an online platform where uh, both uh, teachers, students, and of course researchers will be able to uh, use AVT um, uh, lesson plans and the, that we're going to design uh, within the project. And then uh, we also plan uh, to um, uh, have a mock, uh, a massive online open course uh, at UNED uh, about the project, um, and also summer courses in the uh, future, well, of course, before uh, the end of the project, also available at the UNED. Um, so I'm just going to show you now a description of the didactic sequence. So as I said, it will be over five months. Um, it will be online. And uh, the content of this uh, didactic sequence is actually 15, 60 minutes lesson per level of students. So we said we're going to have uh, both B1 and uh, B2 level students. So there will be also uh, 15 uh, extra um, lesson plans with different videos, but of course following the same uh, sequence uh, structure. And so we'll have a total of <clears throat> uh, 30 out of 60 lesson plan per level. Uh, so, uh, we will have the five AVT uh, modes I've already mentioned, and as you can see, there will be uh, three for each of them. Which are the learning outcomes? Well, first of all, to, to develop <clears throat> audiovisual mediation skills, to develop reception and production skills, but also grammar, lexical and intercultural competence, and to enhance transferable ICT skills. And uh, one of the aim is also uh, to promote creativity, which is uh, one uh, motivating aspect of, uh, of learning a foreign language. Uh, for what concerns the, uh, the role of learners and teachers? Well, learners, we um, uh, hope to promote critical thinking, and of course, online L2 reception, production and mediation, as well uh, as uh, ICT. And the role of uh, the teacher will be um, that of um, facilitator. And in this case, uh, they will be specifically trained to do so. Uh, in the experimental phase, uh, they will, well, first of all, they will create the online groups within their uh, language center. They will present the didactic sequence and they will follow the instruction that the um, research members they provide them. Uh, they uh, will monitor the learners weekly and they should check, uh, well, first of all, that the task is completed within the time frame. Uh, they should motivate learners to complete the task because, as we said, it's an online activity and students, they will be learning, uh, well, within the group, that, but they will be carrying out tasks uh, individually. And then, of course, uh, they will be available to solve a specific issue. And, of course, there will be also uh, the research team available to help the teachers. <clears throat> I um, show you here a sample of didactic uh, sequence. So, um, as you can see here, uh, we have the uh, Common European Framework level. In this case, this is the very first session, just to give you an idea. Um, so, it's uh, taught for B1 learners. Um, we uh, selected um, a short um, extract of a video. It's actually uh, um, a short film, um, and it's called The Worst That Could Happen. It's available on the YouTube channel of the project. Uh, the function of the um, didactic sequence in this case is socializing. And the ABT mode uh, we selected is um, subtitling. And in this case, since it is the very first um, time they um, use subtitling, it's interlingual keyword subtitling. So they need to insert only the keyword that is missing. Uh, the aim of the session is to introduce students to subtitling. 
so they will be able to um, do uh, more easily the following um, sequence, well, the, the following lesson plans. And um, in this particular case, um, because of the audiovisual input, they should practice requests as well as invitation. Um, this is uh, the um, uh, overview of the lesson plan, so you can have a look. And uh, this is going to be repeated for the different AVT modes. Uh, so still, please remember that we are working um, with learners that they should carry out the um, um, activity online on their own. So um, we decided uh, for them to dedicate about 10 minutes to the warm up. And in this case, in this particular one, they will have um, both reception and production tasks. Uh, we include writing, reading and mediation. Uh, this will serve to anticipate the video content. So prepare the vocabulary for the um, actual viewing. And um, in this sense, uh, to uh, gather the necessary background information to face the uh, didactic uh, task. Uh, for what is uh, concerned the video viewing, it will take probably only about five minutes. They will uh, listen, but they will also have to mediate with the audiovisual input. Um, we uh, actually ask them um, to watch the um, audiovisual input twice. Uh, that will be available with uh, Spanish subtitles, uh, paying attention to uh, subtitle condensation. Um, in this case, the objective is to understand the message, to be subtitled, and to get familiar with the key uh, linguistic content. Uh, then the actual core uh, part of the of the task is didactic subtitling. Uh, in this case, there will be uh, involved both listening and writing skills. Uh, since it is the very first activity, they should uh, get familiar with the subtitling editor uh, and they should complete the keyword uh, within the subtitles. Um, well, in this case, they will work on uh, audiovisual mediation skills uh, mainly, but also uh, on um, lexical competence. And then to conclude uh, the activity, uh, they will dedicate uh, about 15 minutes uh, to the uh, post AVT task. Uh, which is a related writing task to practice the elements of the video. So this is uh, basically aimed at making the most of the linguistic uh, content of the video. Um, well, we've been uh, working uh, on the production of the um, um, lesson plan. Uh, for the moment, we're working with uh, Google and uh, we produce the, um, the lesson plan in Google Forms. So you can have a sample here of what it looks like. Um, in this case, as we said, the warm up, they uh, should prepare for the AVT uh, task. So there's a number of um, activities that they need to focus on. So for example, uh, this video was about asking someone, um, some, well, asking someone some um, somebody out for lunch so we will focus on that in this case we said they will be also working on mediation so they have to read the following sayings for example you are my happy place and they should provide a translation and of course we invite them not to translate the um, sentence word by word but to to look at the um to look for a phrase hmm, that could mean the same uh, in uh, in spanish uh, for what concerns the video viewing uh, the video is uh, actually embedded in the, um, in the form uh, on the Tradilex um, YouTube channel. And they need to have uh, an active watching of the video. And they should pay attention to the difference in between uh, the um, oral language input and the written language input, which means the uh, audio, the dialogue and the subtitles. And then they need to move on to the didactic subtitings for the 30 minutes uh, allocated. So they need to download the clip. Everything is available on Google Drive and it's very easy to, um, to download and to work on. Uh, they need to open, in this case, we suggested a subtitling editor that is usually, well, usually works fine both for Mac and Windows, uh, but also we suggest to subtitle edit as another one. They need to produce the uh, intralingual, uh, well, the keyword intralingual subtitles, and then they add to submit uh, the activity by uploading um, their file here. Uh, we actually, um, since we are going to have uh, many uh, learners involved in the project, in the experimental phase, um, we also have, um, well, each activity of course is coded. Uh, for example, here you can see lesson plan subtitling one, level B1. 
and then uh, they need to provide their uh, students code uh, and uh, we tried well we actually found a way to um, uh, to code the students uh, effectively uh, to then collect the results so these are the references of the presentation i hope i um, respected the time constraints <laughs> and uh, i wish to thank you uh, for your attention and of course i'm very happy to answer your questions thank you jennifer so who who would like to ask questions or make comments i will have a, a comment on the chat well I will read it, read it aloud just in case. So thanks a million for the talk. I'm teaching translation and dialogue writing for dubbing, and I find this is the easiest, still very time-consuming part of dubbing to assess. In my experience, the actual revoicing aspect of dubbing proper doesn't tend to be assessed in modules. Rather, it's a bit of a bonus fun activity. Are there assessment criteria in place for revoicing itself? You mentioned Talavan's new assessment guidelines. Uh, and provide a reference, please. Feel Sorry, free to raise your mind. hand and and ask um, by by speaking aloud. I mean, <laughs> well, so here is the well the reference list, and um, I already asked uh, Blanca and well for permission to uh, have the present well the recording and actually the PowerPoint of this presentation available on the Tradit uh, website. So here is the uh, hello. Here's the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Hello, Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> uh, well, no, okay. just in, in regard to references, if I can blow my own horn, um, there's probably a strategic mistake. Um, there's the Cliffflare Progress Report, uh, which although the name doesn't seem very attractive, I, I, it includes a very strong rationale for uh, AVT and language learning. Uh, um, and that's in the uh, Il Repository, and it has, uh, I think, a very detailed part about the various combinations of languages, of re uh, revoicing, uh, captioning, and uh, types of activities that can be done. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, Cliffray has been a great reference for all this. And actually, I did <laughs> include the reference to the state of the art uh, Lertola 2019 because I didn't have space <laughs> to include all the references in the slide. So I said, OK, you know, everything is, is there too. Anyone else has questions or comments? People are not asking questions. Irene? Uh, okay, uh, can or, I ask? Patrick, Patrick, yeah, yeah, Patrick, and then Irene. Just, um, well, if, if I understood correctly, it's a very ambitious project. You, you plan to design a, a whole course um, uh, exclusively based on ABT. They use no, no other activities or materials. Is that the case? Yeah, actually, yes, Patrick, yeah, it's an ambitious project and um, uh, indeed, uh, well, as I said, we are 20 members involved in the project and uh, Noah Talavan in this case is doing a great job coordinating all of us and um, uh, we actually managed to have uh, several language centres um, willing to participate in the experimental phase and um, involving uh, teachers and a good number of learners. So yes, the experimental phase will um, be carried out over five months and there will be all these uh, sequences. Uh, well, there will be the didactic sequence, which have the sample, well, the sample I, I presented to you today, and then there will be the five modes involved. So students, they will uh, follow a progression uh, doing all these uh, AVT modes on, well, uh, according to their language level. Irene? Irene de Iges? Um, uh, sorry. Um, um, I was thinking maybe Patrick was uh, adding up. Um, I was wondering uh, how you get the clips, like how you select the clips. Are they only films? Are they short films? Um, so clips of films, short films or um, TV series? Uh, if you can uh, add some information about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thank you, Irene. So, yeah, Noah Talavan was also typing the chat for Patrick and, well, for the rest, of course, that is not a complete course just on AVT, but as, yeah, she uh, just detailed that is done extra research. Hmm? Uh, so there will be 15 uh, hours uh, in five months. Uh, because uh, each uh, level of student should, well, is supposed to do uh, the 15 lesson plans and the duration of each lesson plan is uh, 60 minutes. So that's that's it. And uh, thank you. And Irene, so yes, um, to answer your question. Uh, so basically, um, that's, uh, well, as we, we said, and I mean, uh, it's very time consuming to uh, prepare AVT tasks, especially for the audiovisual um, selection of the clips. Um, in this uh, case, we um, we decided all together to focus on, uh, well, if possible, short films, documentaries, and then of course, you know, it depends on the type of AVT mode. So voiceover, for instance, in, I mean, there will be documentaries in mainly, but yes, we're trying to find um, creative common um, material, and that's not uh, that easy. And especially because uh, we need to find uh, the, Perfect video. I mean, the the two minute video that is motivating and including um, meaningful language input. So that's that's not easy at all. But we also uh, thought that we can uh, actually use uh, video clips. Um, I mean, for different uh, ABT modes, if possible, because we're preparing uh, 15 extra activities um, for the same level. So we have 30 instead of 15 in case uh, some students, they have time and they wish to um, to do further practice. Thank you. You're yeah, very well. And we uh, also, sorry, Blanca, no uh, the, the video are available on the uh, well on the YouTube of the of the project. I think Maro Kea wanted to ask a question, but perhaps not anymore. <laughs> yes. Well, the is that my question was similar to the one that uh, Irene asked. But um, I, I, well, uh, first of all, congratulations for your seminar, which was very interesting. Thank and you. Uh, I was wondering if you had any criteria selecting the clips, but um, more specifically related to the topics. I mean, you can uh, use uh, clips um, on audiovisual humor or cultural aspects. So um, that's, that, that was my question. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, one of the, um, well, one of the ideas we brainstormed at the beginning uh, to actually have a um, uh, fil rouge uh, of the videos. But then we thought since we have to create so many um, activities and we need, um, you know, more variety. And as we said, it's difficult to find um, uh, motivating uh, videos and especially because we need very short videos uh, we usually propose a two minute video and then the actually um, AVT task is carried out of only one minute because it's I mean it's time consuming for them to either translate or um, dab or I mean any type of AVT task is quite time consuming so uh, since they are also working online on, on their own um, that was well. That was our decision. So there's actually a variety and uh, of uh, different videos. And I saw um, yeah. two questions in in the chat. One from oh, Boris. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I I can read them aloud. Boris is asking. Boris Basket is asking one question. Did you consider drawing inspiration from fan-made ABT translation at all for didactic purposes? If yes, how? If not, why not? <laughs> thank you for such a wonderful presentation. Well, thank you, Boris, for the for the comment and the question. Uh, well, for what concern, uh, yeah, fan-made ABT translation. So we said that we were happy to um, include creative uh, creativity to the um, to the project, and especially because uh, creative dubbing. Um, or subtitling has been a recent proposal and um, is actually uh, raising uh, scholars' attention and especially uh, students. Uh, in this case, um, sorry, I'm just going to go back to the one second to the presentation so you'll have that uh, in front of you, which I think is um, uh, here. Uh, so I'm going back here to the meet. Uh, so what we decided, we decided to include um, subtitling, like um, in, in, um, in the case, for example, the very first one, it's uh, interlingual keyword, but it's actually subtitling. Uh, then voiceover, it's, uh, well, 
pure voiceover, dubbing as well. Usually we respect, um, I mean, the, the text. And uh, same for audio description and SDH. But definitely, and since we are still in a sort of um, even creativity phase ourselves, the, the members of the project, it's still something we can take into consideration. And since uh, we have the chance to have uh, Nota Lavan here as well, <laughs> to get more uh, impression and suggestion, uh, we'll definitely take into account of uh, I mean, the idea of uh, including creative AVT. And, and then, then it was Ilaria. Uh, Ilaria Parini, are the students involved in this project students specializing in foreign languages or also in other degree courses <laughs> where they have to take exams in English, for example, economics, etc.? Well, as far as I know, and uh, Noah in this case can also, um, I mean, add uh, more because um, at the moment we are, um, well, basically the, the, the language centers involved um, involve uh, language learners that are adults uh, studying languages. So they are not really uh, specializing in foreign languages in terms of um, like a degree in, in foreign language. Mm -hmm. So I think we, um, we have a greater variety of uh, target learners. Okay. Any further questions? Thank you for the question. No? <laughs> Thank you. We have time for one or two more questions if you like. We have one more question. Immaculada Rosal Bustamante. Thank you so much for your presentation. It's been very helpful. I'm working on the design and piloting of a similar study for my final master's thesis. I was wondering if there were any resources online available for the ABT material input containing specific English grammatical structures that are used in specific levels, such as inversions. Inversions, sorry, for a C1 level, it's not um, been that easy to find videos that could contain interesting grammatical examples like these ones. Thank you so much in advance. Okay, <coughs> that's actually a very specific question, but we like that. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Maculada, well, thank you very much for your question and, uh, well, good luck with your um, uh, final uh, master thesis, actually dissertation. <laughs> okay, Boris uh, suggested Bridgerton, the new Netflix uh, series. Um, so, um, you're usually, well, you're actually asking about uh, ABT material that includes specific grammatical structure. Um, I have to say that, um, like a repository in that sense, I mean, uh, it's a bit difficult uh, to find. Uh, but for example, if you want to, um, if you want to, I'm just gonna paste here the link. Um, since, uh, as I said, Cliffair is still running, you can actually, um, you can actually go to Cliffair and uh, look in the studio. Uh, you actually have, um, I cannot open it now because I have a Mac and it's not working for me, but in the studio, you actually have uh, the filter and you can check and you can put keywords in case uh, the description of the of the old, well of the video and the activity includes what you're looking for um well one other suggestion i would do as what i actually do when i, I look for very specific uh, input as you are doing now uh, i actually um well i tend to prefer you said you're working on but you don't you don't specify which type of abt mode you're using Anyway, if you're going to use um, a movie or a, a TV series script, I would go on the internet. There are actually several websites where you can find the script of the um, actual series or the movie. And you can um, open the script and then basically do a research within the script looking for the uh, input in terms of grammatical, for example, structure you're, you're looking for and, um, and find just a basically a simple, uh, you know, find and search within the document. You know, if you find the script, what you're looking for, then you should go look for the, um, for that episode of the series or that moment in the film and check if actually the script is exactly what has been said in the script because sometimes actors or dubbers or, you know, they change a little bit, but still, if you find that there in the script, usually you find that in the audiovisual input too. I hope I answer your question. <laughs> Immaculada, which IVT mode are you using? Sorry, since you're on the chat. Uh, 
Ah, okay, subtitling. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, if I may add this, um, in my PhD thesis about subtitling, I conducted a corpus study and I think I have examples of inversion. So if you want to contact me afterwards, but of course it's not that a whole clip will have a lot of inversions, but perhaps I can help you find some examples, you know? Well, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? We, I think we have time for one more question and that would be an hour and that would be very good timing. So one last question, anyone? Aurora. Aurora Troncoso. Thanks for the talk. I found it very interesting. Maybe I've missed this, but I was wondering if you're thinking of using the data, for instance, the pronunciation in the voicing exercises to measure improvement in L2 learning in terms of L2 pronunciation improvement. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, um, actually, uh, we have the um, um, we are lucky because our um, research group and um, that is involved in the project is very uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, profiles of different um, uh, scholars and they're actually uh, one uh, who is an expert in um, in pronunciation and I'm sure we will uh, focus also on that because as I said there will be a um, uh, well, good number of uh, teachers and students involved um, in the different language centers so I'm sure that we will um, gather uh, many data that we can um, analyze in terms of also pronunciation and um, as I said usually I mean the the Tridilex uh, website I mean within the Tridit uh, group is uh, very up to date uh, we actually recently, I didn't mention that, sorry, in the presentation, but we actually recently opened a Twitter account as well in order to disseminate uh, the results uh, of the, well, and the events and everything we're doing within the project. Uh, the project is going to be uh, finished in 2023, uh, but the website is very up to date. So I would say, Aurora, that um, you can well, keep an eye on the, on the website and see because there they will be published all the outcomes. I just shared it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Blanc. Mm -mm. Thank you. So, thank you all. I think we could finish here. If you agree, Jennifer. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like? Okay. So, thank you all for your attendance, and we will be letting you know about our next open seminar through the social network. So, we hope that you will be there as well. Thank you, Jennifer, for a very interesting talk, and and thank you all. Well, thank bye -bye. you very much, Blanca, and thank you very much to all of you for being here today and for those uh, who will watch it online. Thank you very much for your interest, and, and you have my email <laughs> that was in the very last, so if you, if you need to, well, sorry, if you wish to ask me um, something by email, here is my email address. Thank you very much, indeed. Thank you. Cost, European Cooperation in Science and Technology. This video is based upon work from Cost Action Leadme CA19142, supported by COST, European Cooperation in Science and Technology. COST, European Cooperation in Science and Technology, is a funding agency for research and innovation networks. Our actions help connect research initiatives across Europe and enable scientists to grow their ideas by sharing them with their peace. This boosts their research, career, and innovation. www.cost.eu This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, CC BY, funded by the Horizon 2020 Framework Programme of the European Union.